Hey guys, I wanted to show you how we painted our noodle board. So we've had this made for quite some time. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a video that I'll link for that so you can see how we made it. It's kind of been hanging out in our kitchen, not really painted. Kids have already colored on it with crowns and stuff, so I knew it was time to really get it done and finished. So what I'm using is just a sample from Lowe's. This is just flat house paint. It is in Armitage Gray. Um, and I'm just painting a base coat of that all over the noodle board. This did a good job covering up those crown marks. I didn't even like try and clean them off or anything. I just painted right over it. After it dried a little bit, I just kind of wanted to give it a weathered farmhouse antique kind of look. So I just went back through with just like a dry brush and just added a little extra paint here and there just to make it look a little not so perfect. And after the top dried, I just flipped the whole board over so I could also paint the inside with that same gray. And I knocked my whole tripod over, so that's always fun. Hey guys! So after I fixed it, I painted the inside of the noodle board with that same gray. You just wanna make sure that when you're painting it, you really get into kind of those grooves of the wood and any little knots that you see too. So when I just kind of painted over the knots or the grooves, the paint really didn't get in there, so I kind of had to push. That's why the sponge brush kind of worked out really nicely because I could just kind of push it into those corners and get them painted and push them into those grooves where the boards connect and it worked out great. And then a few days later after the whole thing dried, I went ahead and put my stencil on top of it. So what happened when I made my stencil is I kind of made it a little bit too big. I made kind of marks so I could line everything up just perfect. And when I went to go put it on the noodle board, it kind of went on my edging of my noodle board and I didn't quite like how that looked. So I had to make it just a tad bit smaller so it was framed out of the edge, if that makes sense. So it was just on those like three boards in the middle. So what I ended up doing was cutting my stencil apart, but then to help me line it up, I took the inside of my stencil and I put it on my noodle board just so I could see where to place my stencil that it would all kind of fit. Cause I knew I was kind of cutting it close with the letters and the chicken and all of that. So I cut everything off as close as I could get it so I could line it up. So I'm just using Dollar Tree contact paper. I also have a video where I show you how to use contact paper as a stencil, so you can check that out too. But I always use Dollar Tree contact paper for my stencils, and I don't really have a problem with it. I just am really kind of careful when I paint in the edges. So now I know exactly where that chicken needs to go so I can also fit my words in. And so I'm lining my stencil up kind of just over top of the chicken. And then I can remove the inside, the chicken, and I'll have it right where it needs to be placed. So the inside stencil got a little stuck on the outside stencil. I just made sure to hold down the outside stencil really well so I could peel that inside part off and not really shift my stencil around any and it was fine. I just laid it back down and smoothed it out and I knew that I'd have space to fill those words in too.
Because I ended up putting these words closer together, I knew that my stencils would overlap one another, so I couldn't lay all of my stencils down at the same time and paint everything at once. So I just put down um, part of my word stencil, the last part, I think, and then I'm going to go back later and lay the stencil on top of it when it's all dry to add the first part of the words there. So now I am just painting in my chicken and I'm just using a house paint. I'm pretty sure it's like trim paint and it is it is glossy so I used flat paint on the board and now a glossy paint on top of that. And this paint is a little bit older. I've used it for a lot of my projects so it's kind of thick which is nice because going around those edges it didn't really have any problems with bleeding because it was thicker. It kind of reminded me of like a chalk paint consistency but it's not chalk paint. Um, it's just a latex paint and I just painted that in and again I'm kind of going for like that farmhousey rustic-ish look without it being super distressed so I just kind of painted it on like lightly and dry brushed it out and kind of let it do its own thing. So you saw with the chicken stencil, I brushed it kind of outwards, like out from the stencil, so I'm not pushing it inwards to the stencil. But whenever I do words, I pounce my brush, just so I'm not, um, just helps with bleeding a little bit. I'm not trying to pick the stencil up any, so I just kind of pounce it up and down. And the great reveal, there's our chicken. And the first word, well, the last word, but the first word that I put on there. So after I removed all of the stencil and it was all nice and dry, I could go back and fit this stencil back on top and kind of line it up with the chicken and the homestead and just be really careful not to overlap these words with any of the words that I already have on the noodle board. And you kind of see too I folded it in half just a little bit and made a little crease and that shows me where the middle of the stencil is so I can line it up with the middle of the chicken. And I use my trusty measuring tape to make sure that all of the letters, so I'm using like the O and the U because they're the same letters in both words, to make sure that they are equal distance to the bottom of the noodle board. And once I make sure it's all kind of straight and how I want it, I can go ahead and pull that stencil off. The font that I'm using is our like logo font and it kind of has like a brush stroke design within it. So my stencil has very like teeny tiny pieces inside some of the letters. So I'm just being very, very careful to kind of keep those little pieces in place. So I kind of like fight with the H a little bit. Um, because I want those like brush strokes or it to look like it was kind of like hand lettered onto the board. You can kind of see it a little on the homestead, like the H has like a little line in it and the E. So it was just a, a font that I had to go kind of slowly with. <laughs> Again, I had to cut my stencils down pretty low because of how it was all kind of put together. So what I do is I just kind of stick my finger over the my board where it's really close to the stencil. So I get paint on my finger and not the board. You could 
tape it down or you know put something else there so you don't get extra paint on the board but you know I just used my fingers <laughs> and there you go I pulled it off and it's great so I didn't kind of cover any of the other words or the chicken and it's all done there's our noodle board all painted we will end up sealing it with a water-based polyurethane so it could be sealed and we can wipe it down and not have to worry about it and that's it thanks so much for watching guys as always you can find more from us here let me know do you guys have a noodle board do you want to make a noodle board what would you put on your noodle board let me know in the comments make sure you like and subscribe bye guys